It's exactly 4.30 p.m. on Monday, January 30th, and I am making this video because over the last 25 minutes, the psychopath who lives in the bathroom directly behind this wall right here has been smoking up a storm directly on the other side of this wall, which is her tiny windowless six foot by eight foot unventilated bathroom. You can't see anything out of that bathroom because there's no window, but she sits there for hours and she has been sitting there pretty much most of the afternoon smoking and burning marijuana cigar fumes something that smells like burning rubber and she also electronically interferes with what I try to do on my phone usually when I am in my unit it doesn't happen too often when I'm out because she probably doesn't uh, have much knowledge of what I do on my phone if I'm not in the building but because she can presumably see and hear everything I do in this unit because she has actually broken into this unit several times, a few times while I've been physically in here and I've seen her standing in the doorway, unlocking the door with something. Um, she has just remotely disabled my phone on multiple occasions over the last 30 minutes while I have been trying to contact law enforcement about an ongoing court case where I am the victim and the perpetrator is one of her friends, one of her close personal friends. So this has happened many times over the last few years. The cyber criminal psychopath who lives behind this wall right here, who has been, again, physically sitting behind that wall pretty much the entire afternoon, and it is now 4.30 p.m., while I've been in the process of attending to a lot of different matters, cleaning and organizing, sending emails, trying to make some phone calls, trying to touch base with, for instance, the district attorney's office, the detective's office, the police station, this psychopath has basically prevented emails that I've been trying to send from being sent to the recipients. She has prevented phone calls that I've been trying to make to the DA's office and to the police station from going through. So right now I have a screenshot of six dropped calls to the police station that were dropped even before the call was able to connect to the phone number. She also caused four calls that I made to the DA's office to suddenly be dropped or cut off in the middle of the call. And she caused two calls that I made to the detective's um, phone line to be dropped. This all happened within the last 40 minutes or so. This person is a cyber criminal. She's a hacker. And she is able to interfere with my phone communications and with my emails. And almost always, she interferes with the phone communications and emails that I try to make to law enforcement. So again, Four calls that I made to the DA's office over the last 30 minutes were dropped or cut off while I was in the middle of either speaking to somebody on the other line or trying to reach somebody on the other line. The call just cut out. This happened four times in a row. And several calls I made to the police station were completely cut even before anybody was able to pick up the phone at the police station. And two more calls were suddenly caught, cut off while I was speaking to someone at the police station. That's a total of like 10 dropped calls in the last 35 minutes, all of them to law enforcement and to three different branches of law enforcement. So it's not like I was calling the same phone number and that same one phone number just wasn't working or I just couldn't connect. I've called four different phone numbers regarding the court and the police over the last 35 minutes. And every single one of those phone numbers had at least two drop calls that I was trying to make to it. That's not a coincidence, folks. That is an unbelievable amount of drop calls. Every single call I tried to make over the last 35 minutes has been dropped or cut off. That's weird. Given that there is a cyber criminal psychopath sitting directly behind this wall right here, blowing fumes of marijuana smoke, burning rubber, cigars, and something else that I can't identify. So she's physically present directly behind this wall. She presumably has audio and video footage of what I do in my apartment because other people keep telling me that they can see and do, see and hear what I do in this apartment. Um, the cyber criminal herself has physically broken into and accessed this unit while I've been in the unit and I had to physically see her standing in the doorway singing and pulling pieces of tape off of the door jam after she had presumably picked the lock to get in. I mean, the locks, you know, picking locks is pretty straightforward. There's a lot of YouTube videos on how to pick locks. And she's been sitting behind this wall being disruptive nonstop for the last few hours. And just now, every single call I just tried to make to law enforcement 
or to the DA's office has been cut off or dropped in the middle of the call to four different phone numbers. So that's not a coincidence. She's been doing this for years. She often um, causes phone calls that I make to 911 um, to bounce, to, to be cut off, especially when I'm making them around this building complex. So it's always around the building. It's always about people in the building. This doesn't happen if I call 911 because I'm out on the Mass Pike and somebody, you know, just drove by at 90 miles an hour. That doesn't happen. It's always relating to this building and to the people in it. So that just happened. Um, the cyber criminal, again, in Unit 78, named Jay Irizarry, just deliberately interfered with my phone calls and emails to law enforcement over the last 35 minutes. And emails that I sent to the DA's office yesterday, today, and the day before yesterday do not appear to have been received by the DA's office, even though I CC'd myself on the, on the email and it should have been received by them. But she appears to be tampering with the delivery of emails to the DA, to the detectives on this case that involve, again, her personal close friend who lives in the building complex. So it, it's good to be a hacker because you can just prevent emails from reaching their intended recipient, especially if the emails are about you or your friends committing crimes that you don't want law enforcement to know about. So that needs to be noted.